All right, now we're doing 7Q likes versus dislikes. This is by Ill Python, and 92% of the people like it. Uh, basically, this talks about how YouTube used to have that dislike button, and uh, that, well, I mean, it still does. I know that for a fact. <laughs> but yeah, uh, what, what am I saying? Anyway, so, you know, when you click it, uh, when you click it, it'll say like or dislike, depending on the button you click. And then uh, if you click it again, it'll go back to nothing. And if you had dislike clicked and you click like again, it'll go and end up as like. So we're basically going to go through an array and figure out what it should be at the end of it. So to do that, we're going to use the reduce function, excuse me, the reduce uh, method. And let's fix this up real quick. Const like or dislike equals buttons and this right here all right so we're going to use this reduce method which uh executes a user supply reducer callback function on each element of the array in order passing in the return value from the calculation on the preceding element the final result of running the reducer across all elements of the array is a single value and the first time that the callback is run there's no reduce return value of the previous calculation if supplied an initial value may be used in its place all right uh, so we're going to be using this syntax right here, some arrow function syntax uh, with previous value, current value as our parameters, a little expression right here, and then an initial value as well. The initial value is going to be nothing because that's the state uh, that it starts on. You can see this kind of nothing here. So we're going to say uh, buttons dot reduce, and we're doing previous value, current value, all right, and we're going to have comma. Uh, nothing because that's the initial value right there and as far as the uh, expression goes we're going to use a ternary operator and the ternary operator is the only JavaScript operator that takes three operands a, co a condition followed by a question mark then an expression to execute if the condition is truthy followed by a colon and finally the expression to execute if the condition is falsy and this operator is frequently used as an alternative to an if else statement and that's exactly what we're going to be using it for so in here we're going to say if current equals previous we're going to return nothing whoops nothing and if it is not the previous we're going to return the current all right so let's say it's the previous is nothing well that's not nothing that is nothing there we go all right, so let's say the previous is the first one. Not, it's nothing, right? And you hit like. So the C would be like, and now the C turns into the P. And now next time the P is like, and we hit like again, and now it turns into nothing because C equals P. Uh, and there we go. And that's basically how that works. So let's test it out. There we go. Attempt it. And submit it. All right. So let's go to my, actually, let's look at this one. So basically, it's the exact same as this, except for uh, this is just doing it long style. This initial value is nothing. Uh, if, if, if button equals state, uh, return nothing. Else, return the current uh, button at i. And then that whatever the final state is, is the state. Same thing here. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, we didn't have one. Of, we left out one of these. And we called it uh, E, excuse me, PC instead of state and button. All right, so let's go to mine. Uh, just like you see here, best practice in my opinion, very much like this one. And we'll see you next time.